Hi, we are now going to study electrostatics, probably one of the most important topics in the whole of physics. Once you understand the concepts of electrostatics and electric forces, you will see that you can explain pretty much everything happening around you. The word electricity or electrostatics is a Greek word, Thales of Miletus, 2600 years ago, observed that if you take amber, what is amber? You might have seen this resin that flows from trees. Nice big trees. You might have seen this kind of a material that comes out of trees. This is called amber. If you take amber and you can usually see amber is used to make jewelry. You take amber and you rub it on a piece of fur. Then amber starts lifting up things like things like feathers and so on. So Thales observed this. The Greek word for amber is electron. And so from that we get the word electricity. Suppose you think about the word electricity. What comes to your mind? Probably you might think about lightning. You might think about the electric power that powers our houses. You might think about the shock that you might get on a cold day if you touch the doorknob. You might even think about some videos that you might have seen on the internet where hair sticks on balloons. Or you might think about cell phone, a lot of electronic equipment. All of it runs on electricity. Of course, all these are electric phenomena. But don't think that only these are. Electric forces have many, many more effects. Maybe things that you may not think have anything to do with electricity. For example, I am right now standing on the ground, right? Now gravity is pulling me down. What is holding me up? You might say, ah, the floor is exerting a normal force. But what is normal force? Normal force is an electric force. The atoms on the ground are pushing the atoms on my foot with an electric force and that is what we call normal force. Suppose I take a rope and pull something, you can think of tension, right? But the tension is an electric force. If I put some salt in water and I stir it, what I am doing there is using electric forces to dissolve the salt in water. Light itself is an electric phenomena. Light is an electromagnetic wave. It is electric forces at work. Everything around you, almost everything around you is electricity. But all things around us, if you look at the matter around us, that is what leads to electric effects that we observe. So if you want to understand electric effects, you must understand matter. Because ultimately, matter is driven by electricity. To understand the electric nature of matter, let us take a brick. Suppose I break this into smaller pieces, then I break this further into almost powder. I can keep on breaking it, at the end what will I reach? I will reach the atomic level. So each of these balls there, you can think of them as atoms. The word atom basically means indestructible. Of course, today we know that atoms are not really indestructible. They have a structure. Atoms have a central nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. The protons are positively charged. The neutrons are uncharged, neutral. And very far away, very far away. For example, if this was the size of the nucleus, I should be drawing these electrons several kilometers away. Well, of course, I can't draw that. So I've drawn it here. But you have to imagine that the electrons are very far away from the nucleus. So you have electrons roaming around. Notice you have two protons and you have two electrons. The charge on the proton is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. C stands for coulomb. Okay, that is the unit of charge. So each of these protons has a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. It may look like a very small charge, but charge is quite powerful. So even this is a reasonably significant charge. And if you look at the electrons, they have a charge of minus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Exactly the same amount of charge. Proton has plus charge, electron has minus charge. Now, if you look at just the nucleus, it has a positive charge. But if you take the atom as a whole, you have two positive charges here and you have two negative charges. So the net effect is that the atom has zero charge because the number of 
protons is always equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. Okay. So, because the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons, I showed it with 2 and 2, but you might have 4 and 4. For example, carbon has 6 protons and 6 electrons. So, always the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So, the net charge on each atom is 0. That doesn't mean the atom has no charge. It has a positively charged nucleus and it has negatively charged electrons roaming around. But if you take the net charge on the atom, it is 0. So we say the atom is neutral. Because atoms are neutral, matter is made up of atoms. So matter is in general neutral. Now does that mean that this bowl has no charges? This is a neutral bowl, right? Does it have no charges? No, it has a lot of positive charges. It has trillions and trillions of positive charges. But it also has trillions and trillions of negative charges. And the number of positive charges and the number of negative charges, they are exactly equal. And so the positive and negative, they are perfectly balanced. Which means the net charge on this ball is zero. So whatever material you see around you, most of the matter around you, it is always neutral. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have electric charges inside. It has a huge amount of positive charge and a huge amount of negative charge. Except the positive and negative, they are perfectly balanced. Is matter always neutral? Not really. Look at this bottle. So if you look at this bottle, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It has 7 positive charges, 7 protons. And it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 electrons. So 7 plus and 5 minus, so totally 2 plus. So it has 2 excess protons. It has huge number of overall protons, right? Trillions. I've not, I've just shown you as seven, but actually you must think about it as trillions of protons, trillions of electrons, but there is an excess of two protons. So it has two extra positive charges. So the net charge on this basically comes from those two extra protons because all the rest protons and electrons, you can think of them as basically cancelling out. Now the charge on a proton is plus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. Charge on an electron is minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. That's a fundamental unit. So we like to call it with a letter E. So E basically stands for 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. Don't confuse this E with E minus. E minus stands for electron. E stands for this fundamental unit of charge. So how much charge is there on this bottle? It has two protons, so it has a charge of plus 2e. Of course, you can multiply 2 with this and you get plus 3.2 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. But that is a little long to write, right? So that's why we will say plus 2e. Similarly, let us look at this balloon. You have plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. You have a lot of neutral atoms. All the neutral atoms, the net effect will be 0. But there are these three excess electrons. So that means you have three negative charges, right? So what will be the total charge on this balloon? Only because of these three excess electrons. So it is going to be minus 3e. Of course, I can multiply. I don't want to do that. So the net charge on the balloon is minus 3e. Notice I'm getting plus 2e minus 3e. Will I get a minus 2.5e? Will I get a plus 3.5e? No. Why not? Because either you have extra protons or you're going to have extra electrons. So you'll always have an integer number. So the net charge on an object will always be plus or minus multiples of E. We say the charge is quantized. The smallest unit of charge will be E. This is the fundamental unit of charge. So always charge on a matter, on some kind of an object, will always be some multiple of the fundamental unit. So N times e plus or minus n times e. Some of you might know that a proton is made up of three quarks. Okay, a neutron is similarly made up of three quarks and these quarks have charge 2 by 3 e minus 1 by 3 e and so on. Okay, but you will never find quarks separately outside so you will never get this as the charge of any material because quarks cannot be separated. So you will always find that you have 
an integer number of protons extra or an integer number of electrons extra. So charge is quantized in multiples of E. So always the charge has to be plus or minus n times E.